Oh, so now we've got this drawing created, but but what's the next step? Um, you can't really send this to a shop to have this part made. So the drawing there provides the shape description of the part. But when we add dimensions to it, that'll add the size description. So drawing provided the shape, dimensions provided the size. So when we add dimensions, we want to give all dimensions that are necessary to make or inspect the part. And usually it's both make and inspect the part at the same time. Um, but also, we don't want to give duplicate dimensions. So if we go back to the part here, and we look at the width of this, so if I look at the overall width, I get an inch and a half. If I look at the, this little cutout, I get three quarters, and I look at that, I get three quarters. So when I'm looking at these, I don't really need all three of these dimensions to tell me how wide the part is. Because if I have the inch and a half and the three quarters, that's just going to be the difference between them. Same thing here. If I have just these two, I'll get that. So having all three of these actually is over-dimensioning the part. It's too many. Uh, we always want to have something to float. And when we get to tolerances, you'll understand a little bit more. Um, so we don't want to have those. Um, and which two of the three we have really depends on the purpose of the part. So in dimensioning, there's three main categories. There's the technique, where it's drawing the lines, drawing the spacing between the lines and the arrowheads. Um, if we're using CAD, most of this is taken care of for us except for the spacing. Um, when I go into Inventor and I dimension this out, you can see as I'm pointed up. I get little, it turns dot x, it locks in at kind of a measurement there. And so if you use those guides, then you're going to keep consistent spacing. Um, we don't want dimensions too close to the part, nor do we want them too far away. Um, we also have placement, so where dimensions go on the drawing. Um, which views do they go on? Um, some stuff like that. And then also the choice of dimensions. Usually we want a dimension for the inspector, how they're going to check the part to make sure it's a correct part. And then if there's a, a toss-up and it doesn't really matter, then you refine it to make it better for the person doing production. We can also add reference dimensions to help production people so they don't have to do some math. Um, but the inspector know, will know not to look at those dimensions. And uh, we'll put to do that, we'll have the dimension. And we put it in parentheses to make it a reference dimension. So some, some simple guidelines with, or kind of notes. Um, for angles, we can either dimension it with a distance and an angle or with two distances. Um, so if I come back to here, oops, I could go in and give that a dimension that way and a dimension that way. Or I could give it a dimension that way and some kind of an angle. Um, kind of depends on what's important. If it's the the distance that's important or the angle that's important. Um, there's a lot of that in dimensioning. <laughs> With cylinders, we usually want to dimension them where they look rectangular. So again, going to the part, this bottom piece here is a cylindrical piece. And so if I just dimension that coming down and give the diameter, that's the preferred way to do that. Um, same thing with this upper piece. Maybe pull it across there. And it, that didn't give me the diameter symbol because um, I didn't pick a circular edge. But if I just come back into my, my notes, add the diameter symbol, now we know that that's a diameter there. If you have an arc or a hole, we usually want to dimension those in the, in the view that we see them round. With holes, we usually use additional notes. Um, and with fillets and rounds, if there's a lot of them, we can use a general note just in the title block saying all fillets 0.12, all rounds 0.3, whatever. Um, and so you can break them out either way. So if we had a part, and let's just do this part again. Um, this part here, and a curve here, would be a round. And a curve underneath here is a fillet. So interior corners are fillets, exterior corners are rounds. Um, and sometimes if you're designing things that are going to be 
molded either with casting or, or injection molding then uh, fill it on the part would be a round on the mold so you'd have to take that into consideration so most books have pages and pages of rules and things for dimensioning I have six um, each view that you draw should must have at least one dimension um, of course there are exceptions and this the main exception to this is if you're using auxiliary views where you're just trying to get to another auxiliary view um, we don't dimension to hidden lines so if you have something that's in a hidden line you want to dimension it do a section or something like that don't over dimension so I talked about that just a little bit ago these three these first three are the do not break rules don't ever break those the next four or the next three um, you can break but break them in ascending order so first try to dimension outside the part envelope so the part envelope so on this part here the part envelope would be that kind of rectangle around the part so we're trying to try and keep stuff out of this area in here if we can't do that then we want to keep it outside the actual part so dimensioning we can't keep it out of this area we can't keep it out here then go ahead and put it in, in the envelope but off the part and then if you can't do that dimension on the part but don't don't cross the dimension line so if we have this we don't want to have so that's okay that's not okay okay not okay okay not okay we don't want to cross the dimension line with things so those are the basic rules for dimension of drawing so on this drawing here I've kind of already started out kind of doing it so and this radius is really just that one the, the radius of that so I could just say hide that value and give it just an R to tell it that I want that to be a full radius full round radius um, going that way so from here maybe I'll dimension Ah, uh, got into a sketch somehow. So I want that to be traced back, go back to there. And I really want to get that text inside those arrows. So if I just right click on it, options, arrows inside, now I can pull that inside. And now it'll allow me to take the arrows to the outside of it. Um, I might also want to put a center mark there. And I could just extend that out until it, until it meets there. Another th I could also do another Cinemark there, there, right click, create, grab that one, bring it down, bring it out, each side here, let us know that this arc, this circle here is concentric with that arc there. Maybe give a dimension for the height of this one. Ooh, probably pull that a little bit more. So give a dimension to the height of this one and that one. And so this is where determining which one's important matters. So right now I'm using baseline coming from the bottom and up to each of these. Um, but maybe if I did this one and put it to this circle here, maybe that's the important dimension. Um, so you really want to know how the parts are related. So if on the next part, that this goes to it has these two holes in the same part maybe I want to keep the dimension between the two holes um, so that's what I'll do and since I know what the other part is um, I'll just do that so I'll put that in here and now I want to give those dimensions so if I drew this using the hole command um, which I did I can use the hole and thread note and on these that's going to give me the um, the thread information for those. If I add those as counterboard holes, it would give me that too. So if I open this part, 
and I went into that oh not that hole uh, yeah let's say that that one and I told it I want it to be a counter bore I go back to that template it's giving me a little problem but if I just go back out stick it on that now you can see it's updated the note to include the counter bore information um, if I just extruded those as as um, as a uh, um, if I just drew a circle and extruded that, I could not use this whole information. So that's a good reason to use the whole command when you make holes. I'm just gonna kind of go back, and so we kind of want to stagger our dimensions. Um, so here, maybe I want to use. Let's, let's see what that dimension is. So maybe I want to know that that height there, or Let's see, maybe it's there, quarter inch there, spacing there. So I can bring this one down. I pull that a little, out a little bit more. And so maybe I'll stagger these a little bit more because I can make this one kind of behave a little better. So I'll just pull that down there. And try the arrows on this one. See if I can pull that. Nope, it's not going to let me. So. One, go down. So kind of get those spacings kind of equal. Um, so now I can give a dimension to that arc there. So I know the angle of that. Um, because it's on the center line, I don't need to dimension it side to side. Go back to annotate get the thread node for that hole and oop. so I've got this view over here and it's getting kind of crowded so maybe I'll give this dimension this corner dimension there and I'm just gonna do the the step dimension so I'll dimension from there to there and line that up. So now this part is pretty much done. Um, or it, oh, it is done. So everything I need is on this drawing and so I have a good part. I could give this to someone they could make it. Um, my title block isn't quite filled out right so if I go back to the part, go to my eye properties, part number, give it some part number, a description, put that in the title also. On my title block I have the subject mapped, mapped to the material, so just give it till it's 6061, fill that out. I come back here and it updates all of that. So now this part is done. Um, hope that helps. Um, stay tuned for the next video.